Hello everyone, today is Sunday 14 January and it's time to reflect. In my last uh, video I talked about how to deal with divorce and that's more of the emotional side of things. Uh, and as you might or might not know, you have a soul and you have a brain. So emotionally, rationally. Uh, of course you also have a body, you know, that also is affected by your mental health. And one of the greatest things you can do to recover is put that pain of loss, a major life loss, and put that pain, which is basically energy, and you put it into something productive, like studying or working out. And that's exactly what I want to talk about. How you deal with this. Um, your natural first reaction might be i need to find another life partner to to forget about the past and i want to feel i want to feel loved again i want to feel appreciated again but you have to realize that you bring trauma into a new relationship and you have to as a man especially you have to find your value again you have to be proud of yourself you need to accomplish things first and you need to have a good basis for yourself so that you don't think a relationship is the most important thing in your life you always need to have a ground rule for yourself and that's saying when i'm alone i'm doing fine a woman is only a plus one that can enrich my life but it should never be the main goal or you know thing that you really want to pursue in life because when you're doing good females can can sense that and when when you're feeling good and you're doing good and you also this is actually you know that attracts females because you got to be good for yourself because you have to be with yourself so what you can do for instance if you have the luxury to do that is work out in the morning because as a man your testosterone level is the highest in the in the morning and you can half an hour 45 minutes workout and then take a shower and then have breakfast even if that means getting up at six o'clock in the morning I mean, as you get older, uh, you need less sleep and you can really fill in your day re quite productive if you want to. But it all takes discipline for yourself. It takes a lot of discipline to keep on doing that because especially in the winter time, um, it's cold in the morning, it's dark, especially here in the Netherlands. Um, and it's difficult to get out of the bed. So you need to have this motivation to keep on going. But the beautiful thing about putting energy into something and you see the results is that it, it's quite addictive, right? I mean, whenever it's on a professional level, when it comes to getting certificates or it's uh, with fitness gains, for instance, you can see a transformation, losing fat, um, gaining muscles. And it's not about being Arnold Schwarzenegger or something or doing this to impress the ladies. You do it for yourself. That's the mindset that you should have. You should do self-improvement. And if somebody notices and likes it, that's a nice plus. But that should never be the motivation. I think true happiness should come from within yourself. You should look at it from within yourself. What do I want? Where I want to be in five years from now? You know, and I know it's all very narcissistic. But in general, people, also, especially in this day and age, they are narcissistic. There are so many options and choices um, that you have I mean it used to be 50 years ago that one man provided for a whole family they had a house they had a car the wife was at home taking care of the kids taking care of the household very basic and the man usually had the tough demanding work they didn't really become that old so back then there was not such a quest for finding happiness you just did it and there were moments in your life that you were happy what there are many moments in life that you were not happy but you're just going through uh, my, my grandparents they both born in the uh, uh, yeah, 1920 1914 so you know uh, early on in the 20th century they lived through two world wars you know and in between they raised the family and they lost their business they lost relatives uh, in the war um, and that's just a complete different generation than the generation I'm from the from the 80s. And so I'm a, I'm a millennial, basically. And we really focus on happiness and work-life balance. Yeah, of course, jobs be, became more demanding over time because 
productivity is sky high actually and we have to process so much information which is also kind of draining for a lot of individuals and then on top of that a lot of people have this FOMO the fear of missing out which I am so glad I don't suffer from that I always kind of do my own thing <coughs> and this also gives me uh, happiness because there's not much that, that you can you know what, what are you missing out on a festival or your friends having a good time or you can follow them all on social media which I don't because my rule of thumb is if I don't know those people. I don't need to know what they're doing. And if I do know them, then they will talk to me in person. And I, I find that way more genuine, you know, instead of everyone just posting the highlights of their life, which, you know, you never see the downsides of them, which makes them feel like almost gods to you or something like they don't never have a bad day or they never have any bad luck in their life. What I try to get at, like, it's mental health and it's physical health. And, and those things need to be in balance. I've been through quite difficult years myself. Um, you know, you have this outlook on life, like, this is what I want. And eventually when you get it, you you see you don't want it because of circumstances. Um, so you really need to dig deep within yourself what is it that i want out of life and then focus on it and don't have too many outside sources uh, um, making your vision blurry basically that's that's what i'm saying go and take a sip of coffee just a second so it's it's this looking from within and not from the outside in if you catch my drift don't be don't yeah it, it's very important to people in your life that you appreciate that helped you and that you can help and you really have a genuine connection with that that you can ask those kind of questions like what do you think of me or what do you think what kind of direction i'm heading in my life and then you could listen to their arguments because you know them and you respect them but just you know going on the internet and and searching how to be happy or how to be successful. I mean, there's so many websites, so many so-called gurus out there that are going to tell you how to do those kind of things. But I'm, I'm not a guru myself. I'm just explaining what I, uh, what I experience and what works for me. And that's just being close to yourself. If you like to go out, go out. If you like to stay at home, do your own hobby and that makes you happy, do you. If you find another person that you match with, but they don't agree with your hobbies or whatever, like that's fine, but don't change because of them, because it's going to make you unhappy. And if they really, really respect you slash love you, they will respect you for it. It's like, okay, I don't get it, but that makes this person happy and I'm happy for them. That should be a healthy relationship. Like I see too many people try to change to try to fit in or to, to be with a certain person that's actually not good for them. And, you know, I'm in my late 30s. I, ju I just find this kind of stuff out because I also try to fit in very much um, because you think that's what's expected of you and that's what society expects of you. Uh, but it's going to make you miserable in the long time. And, and that's going to cause all kind of problems when you're miserable. I mean, substance abuse or maybe having a short fuse you know i used to be like that myself it shouldn't shouldn't be that much oh, i should say like this it didn't take that much for me to uh to become enraged you know uh because inside was in turmoil it, it was stressful and I'm the type of person that I really need my own space from time to time you know just to be able to process my thoughts and to be creative and to work out and not being disturbed also like the family life I really did but there was never any balance possible for me it was just not possible because the, my partner didn't understand it or she thinks I was pri privileged or something like that but there you have it they don't understand it and I explained it many times um, as you can probably tell already I'm, <laughs> for me it's quite easy to speak um, but they didn't want to understand because it would what would cut into their own action because actually they also want time off for the cell, of themselves and eventually when they tell you that you say okay i understand because i want the same thing but this is going to have consequences for the relationship for the future because if we want to incorporate our own time on top of a 40-hour work week on top of a family on top of a household then it's, you know, it has repercussions. I'm not saying it's not possible, but you know, everything in life has repercussions. 
so I think that's a con constructive way of going about it. But it was not appreciated because in the end she wanted me to do most of the things and she wanted to sleep late and she wanted to have time for herself to go out with girlfriends and kind of use you as a tool which made me more unhappy you know so you know focus on what you want in life bring that same kind of energy into a relationship and not not to um, piss off the other person I mean in a relationship, you need to be a kind of a diplomat. You need to know what the other party wants, what you want, and then you try to, you know, find a constructive solution for things. And if you really do genuinely love each other, you should respect each other's opinion and not put somebody, you know, in, in a situation that they think like, what just happened? You know, build up your confidence. Build it up. After major life events like a divorce or, you know, people passing away in your uh, direct vicinity that you had a very strong connection with that is not replaceable, you need to go back to the basis. And the basis is yourself. You are the basis of everything. You know what you like. You know what you don't like. Um, and just be honest with it. And of course, if you like to travel, you like to go to festivals because you think, ah, I have to do it all now because I'm still young and I still I might miss something. Yeah, then then after a couple of festivals, ask yourself, what did you miss if you didn't go? Just evaluate your life every time. And if you like it, keep on going. If you don't like it, think about what makes you happy. And to be honest, nobody is going to be happy 100% all the time. It's just not possible. There are always things, that's just the balance of life. The good comes with the bad, the bad comes with the good. You're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. That's the reality of it. And and the real reality is that most of most people that you know and that are living in this world, they they live mediocre lives. They do. I mean, they, they're going to have a job that they kind of like, but if they wouldn't be paid, they, they, they would not invest one more minute. They're going to have families that, you know, they're proud of, but it's also a lot of work. Uh, kids change. They need lots of attention nowadays. I mean, it's okay if you're a parent and you love them. That's a genuine connection. You do that for the kids and you get lots of things in return. But don't, don't think for a second it's easy. Kids go to their own developments and before you know it, they're teenagers and, you know, you're going to have to deal with a whole lot of things. While at the same time, maybe you had a good career going on and now you're like some kind of senior manager and life, I would say work, is still demanding from you. Well, the home situation also demands a lot from you. So finding balance is it's a constant struggle for everyone in this modern Western world. I mean... There are lots of great benefits from having a traditional uh, household, but that's almost not possible anymore. A lot of women, they go to university, they study hard, and then it would be kind of a waste not to be a stay-at-home mom. But a lot of women are wired to be like that, only they're being yeah, lied to, basically, by society. Yeah, you can do this, and you need to be financially independent, and this and that is all this fear that's been pumped in, into them. Because if you're a good wife and there's a good guy... He's not going to leave you. He's going to give you some pocket money. But nowadays, the, the cost of living is so high, you need two income. Uh, you know, you need to have that because you need to have two cars. You need to have quite a big house that is close to all the, you know, facilities for the kids and, and, and grocery shopping and everything. Close enough to your work. Uh, still close enough to some, you know, uh, open space so you can unwind in the weekend. You need, need to have all these kind of facilities. Anyway. The gist of this video is you need to focus on what makes you happy. Don't care what society say. Don't care what your teachers say. Don't care what your employers say. You only have one life and you only, you're, you're a unique person, you know. Um, you need to think for yourself with everything. When it comes to the news, when it comes to about institutions like marriage, when it comes to your own health, um, think about it and then make a decision. And when you're really convinced... Keep on running that road and don't look back. You can have a conversation with somebody that doesn't understand your choices. But if you th thought about it well, then you can explain it. And then you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Focus on yourself and rebuild yourself. Especially after things turn sour and, you know, your, your complete direction of life uh, switched for the worse. You got to focus on yourself.
that's where it all comes from. And when you are successful and you're in the right lane, people will notice. Your employer will notice. Your family will notice. Maybe your kids will notice. Maybe a potential partner will notice. I mean, then you're glowing from within. Then you have, the, if you're in the right set and life is going better and better and you make an improvement, man, that's the most powerful thing you can ever do. No relationship or no bag of money can, can you know, outweigh that. Because when you, yeah, let's say for instance, 70% happy and you have 30% because you have that left because not everything goes your way. It's impossible. But when you're at 70%, you're a lucky guy or woman. You are. But that happiness has to come from within. You can't search uh, for happiness from external factors. Okay, guys, that's it. Hope uh, to catch you in a new episode of um, Time to Reflect. This year, 2024, we're going to make more of those because uh, I just like to, uh, to make them. And hopefully they will inspire some people out there to uh, improve their lives as well. That's what I'm uh, on about this year. Doing better. Doing better for myself and the people around me. Thanks for listening. Have a great Sunday.